Hi everybody, this is Ted, and um, I wanted to give you a little tour of my craft cave. Yeah, I call it my craft cave. Here is the sign that verifies that. So, I spent the last couple of weeks of 2020, and then these last uh, few days of the start of the year, organizing it and I think it's now presentable. So here's the scan of my room. <clears throat> As you enter to the left here, I have my dies and basically they're alphabetized by the name of the die. So um, let me just see if I could, here we go. So you can see, I just, each one has a um, little magnetic panel that I put in there. I used um, a brother label maker for the names and then, I wanna say I got these envelopes online. I can't remember where exactly I got them, but, and I just cut white cardstock. And then for the dividers, I just cut some various blue cardstock, laminated it and also used a label here. <clears throat> Uh, these are alphabetized. I also have um, blueprint dies from my favorite things, and as well as uh, some impression plates, all in this location. Here are my various shapes, because I found that a lot of times I would use shapes more often than the other dies. I wanted just to have a centralized location. Down below those, I have a couple of... Um, brown bins here um, with just various materials, cork, foam, oops. and then I have my brads, snaps, uh, eyelets and such. And here I have packaging. So this would be envelopes, bags, and, uh, felt, my felt rolled up in sections. And then my large stamps that wouldn't fit in my regular CD cases are here. And then here are my stamps. Um, I will create another video on how I organize my stamps because it's quite detailed, but basically I have my stamps alphabetized and then I just created some labels and put them in there. They're, they're, in, um, they're, they're just regular CD cases, regular CD cases. And there is my inventory and uh, binders. Uh, I printed out each page. And again, I'll I'll create another video for that. Um, I got my paper tray, ink, ink pads, miscellaneous ink pads, heat embossing, some other drawers down there, more stamp um, binders. I'll explain in a different video. Here I've got my commonly used heating embossing supplies. And then over here is my storage for my ink cartridges. I'm sorry, ink pads. And then I've got my completed cards here. I probably should make some dividers for that. And then uh, some measuring tools, a drawer for my mom's stuff because she's my crafting buddy. And then some other things here. <clears throat> my general work area. Nice, nice size table. Have a good view of the front of my street. Small drawers for adhesives. Um, my rectangular blocks are here, and my square blocks are there. My work area, storage section, which I have my MISTI and my pens and pencils, tweezers, and things that I would use regularly. Paper towel, some wipes, and here is my side drawers, um, whoops, apologize for the finger, um, miscellaneous, <laughs> miscellaneous when I don't really have a spot for it. Here's my ribbon um, storage and buttons, coordinating buttons. <clears throat> then we move over to my cutting area where I have my brother scan and cut under uh, cover, my Benny Bond tool, some drawers that go with that. I also have store my adhesives over here. 
So I've got my score tape, my glues, dimensional tape, other adhesives, some miscellaneous tools. Down there is my 12 by 12 paper, some foam, some bubble wrap, some other tools. And above my cutting area, I've got my blending brushes, my embossing folders, and some other brushes. And then to, on the magnetic side of my filing cabinet, I've got some long dies that really kind of fit in those other folders I showed you at the beginning of the video. So I just put some magnetic strips here and just stick them there. And here's where I um, organize my paper. Um, again, by company and then also by alphabetized. So we open up Paper Tree Ink A to O. Uh, for each tab, I actually took a section of the color paper. So it's a little easier for me to find. I mean, it's alphabetized, but still. I have the paper in here, some pattern paper that goes with it, and then scrap paper um, that goes with that. Here's where I store my Copics. Let's see if I can get this open without. Um, so, uh, gosh, years ago I found um, online someone was selling, um, I guess they cut this little wood thing with, with a spot for a Copix and then um, the tub and so I, I splurged and got that. Um, that's just a guide for Copix. Here are my swatches by cool, warm, neutrals, etc. More paper. There's my shimmer paper, my neutrals for bases and such, my favorite things paper, uh, Gina K paper. Here's where I store my white bases. A hole punch. So this is my cutting section. I've got my scoring here. My cutter pillar cutter. And above I've got my pre-cut cardstock. Makes it a lot quicker just to pull out a base that's already folded. Um, so I can just grab it. Envelopes. A2 5x7 square. My stencils are here, so uh, let's see, here we go, bold paisley and such. I just have a square folder. And then also I have background stamps that wouldn't fit in a large stamp drawer. Twine and string, baker's twine, regular twine, rhinestone, pearls, little, you know, bling, if you will. And then... I got a binder for inspiration, my Skyna Cut binder, some pattern paper, and then we're coming to the end of the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, this is where I just store all my Xyron machines. Um, here's the refills, the Xyron refills. And uh, this, I think, is uh, purple envelopes for my Etsy shop. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and nice big scissors. Um, I think that's it. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for sticking with me these nine minutes. And um, I hope you found some inspiration or maybe just enjoyed watching. Uh, have a blessed day.